Why is it in Warhammer that so many people wear leather? You just don't see that much leather in real life. They're covered in straps and belts, fair enough, on the belts, but not every single person wears a belt in real life. They just weigh too much of it. No one wears that much leather in the real world. Or at least not in public. <laughs> Hi everyone, this week I'm going to be looking at how I paint leather and I'm going to show you two different ways of doing it. They're very similar, but one is for a very aged and scratched looking leather and one is more for the bands and belts and stuff that you get round, obviously belts round waists, but a lot of orcs in particular have um, some leather like strappings around their wrists and stuff. It's also looking at how we paint that. Um, yeah, let's just, let's just dive straight in. When it comes to painting leathers, I usually only actually use two colours, and those are Vinox Hide and an Ivory of some kind. In this case, I'm using Bone White, which is a paint by Game Colour from Vallejo. You've probably guessed it, but the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to base coat all of our leather areas using Vinox Hide. I can't quite put my finger on it, but there is something about this brown that is just... Chef's Kiss. I'm going to start by showing you the aged leather look and for this I'm just going to get some of that ivory colour and put it onto a wide bristled brush. A small dry brush is excellent for this kind of thing. You'll want to make sure there's not too much on there but, but not so little that we're heading towards dry brushing territory because we do want the paint to catch on not necessarily raised areas just all over. Now what we're going to do is we're going to stipple this onto the leather areas that we want to look nice and aged and how I would suggest doing this is focusing on the outer edges and such. The reason that we're doing this is to replicate scratches that you see on aged leather. If you look at pictures of aged leather you will see that near the edges and whatnot there are white scratches and marks where the leather has stretched and torn a little bit and that's what we're trying to replicate. Obviously we're aiming for the edges because they're the areas that are going to get caught in the real world most often. As you walk past something it's going to get caught on like a rock, or a sock, or a dock, or um, let's move on. Now you don't want to be too heavy handed with this because you don't want the leather to just look ivory rather than brown. Okay, this is meant to be just scratches caught on the surface, not the new surface. Once you've got it to a level that you're quite happy with, I would suggest getting out a thin paintbrush, one of the thinnest ones we've got, get a little bit of ivory on it, and then we're going to be placing some individual scratches. I would suggest we're using this technique to focus on the more um, flat areas, the ones where the dry brushy sort of thing won't have caught quite as much. More towards the center, we're going to be doing some small dashes, some small stippling bit here and there, and you want to try and keep it random. Don't think too much while you're doing this. Don't worry if you're overdoing it because we're gonna tie it all back in in a minute, but just try and make it as random as possible to help get that organic feeling. If you're thinking about every scratch and you're probably not gonna get the nicest effect just because you're thinking too much. Okay, so I know what you're thinking. It doesn't look the best. It looks, um, well, to be quite honest, it doesn't look very good. Uh, what we're going to do next will help with that. We're going to use a variety of washes to help tie it together. Uh, why a variety? Well, I think having a variety of colours is a really good thing for this aged uh, leather because, because it adds a bit more dimension. It stops it looking so flat and basic. Uh, the three colours that I'm going to be using are Agrax Earthshade, Seraphon Sepia and Known Oil. So we've got a brown, a black and a more yellowy sort of colour. To begin with, I'm going to use a brown wash, Agrax Earthshade, and I'm going to go around the edges, just slap it on all around the edge where dirt and stuff is more likely to accumulate in these weird little folds and whatnot. After that, I'm going to go in with known oil. This is going to be largely between the two gun holsters and under the strap that goes over it to tie it to his back. Uh, just to help with the idea of shadows and stuff. And then the Seraphon Sepia is more of a random splotches everywhere, just to add a bit of colour um, to differentiate and stuff. Now once this is dried, 
it's up to you how many times you repeat this process. You can go in again with the ivory, adding more scratches and bumps and stuff, and then wash it down again, and you will get different layers. The more you do it, the darker your original ivory is going to be, and the more visible layers there will be which is going to look pretty cool because that will help age the leather. It will make it look older because it's been through more quite clearly. There are different layers of age and that's the kind of thing that you get in real life. So it is entirely up to you how far you push this, how many times you are doing these steps. But my one tip for doing it is each time apply less of the ivory color. Cover less ground just to make the layers a bit more obvious Otherwise, you're just going to be overwhelming everything you've done before and it's kind of a waste. I would just like to interrupt to say this video is sponsored by the subscribe button. Please hit the subscribe button so that you can see my videos. It will come up in your feed, it's free, and you can unsubscribe at any point and it will make me feel less alone. Now onto straps and belts. We're still just going to be using the Rhinox Hide and your chosen ivory colour and we're going to mix them at around a 70 to 30 ratio. 70 being the Rhinox Hide, 30 being the Ivory. And that is to get a nice transition color between the two. And for that, I'm going to sketch in where I want the highlights and such on the leathers. When it comes to deciding where to place these highlights, uh, you want to be thinking about the shapes on which you're applying them to. So on the wrist of this Orc, it's a cylinder, which means the highlights are probably going to fall in a straight line down one side. Obviously not a really thin line, it's going to be spread out so it actually looks real. After all, this isn't metal, so it's not reflecting the lights so finely. It's gonna spread out and stuff around the arm. Once you're done with that, I would bump the mixture up to around 50-50, so you're getting a much lighter version of the previous color. And then you're gonna go over the areas that you've just painted on, but apply it in a smaller area, therefore concentrating the highlights. Now I'm not gonna take it any further than that because otherwise you will wash out the brown entirely and it won't really look right. Instead, what we're going to do now is move on to only applying ivory with a fine brush to apply some edge highlights to each of the strands and apply any individual scratches that you want just by doing a line that goes perpendicular to the actual strap. And that means that if the strap goes sideways, you want the scratches to be going down. By all means, you can do scratches that run the same direction as the strand. It's just more visually interesting if they kind of go against the grain rather than with it. Now it's up to you whether you wash the leather here entirely, or you can be a bit more selective washing certain areas, like on this wristband, I'm just going to wash in between the individual strands to deepen the recesses without altering the colors that I've applied too much. So there we go, I hope you found this video useful. Um, I don't often put that much effort into leathers, but when you've got a model with quite a lot on it, it can be quite useful, especially if you want to uh, add an aged effect to the model. A leather is a really easy thing to age, so you can get that effect pretty easily. As always, I'd like to say a huge thank you for watching. Um, please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Leave any comments down below on videos that you'd like to see in the future. Hit that subscribe button to see future videos and consider helping us out on Patreon where you get early access to videos, looks behind the scene, and you get to influence what I do on the channel a bit more. And there'll be links in the description below. Uh, thank you again, and until next time, I'll see you later.